We are going to learn about the customary system. Hooray! Customary system notes. When converting between measurements in the customary system, we can use proportions. However, if the measurement given is a fraction or decimal, it is easiest to use a unit rate. Let's practice by converting 252 inches into feet. My first step is to identify the strategy I'm going to use to solve the problem. 252 is a whole number, so I'm going to use a proportion to solve. So, the first thing I want to do is write this as a proportion. 252 inches over feet. Well, I don't know how many feet that is, so I'm going to put an X there because it's an unknown. Remember that a proportion is two equivalent ratios, so I need to put an equal sign and I need to write another ratio. The ratio that I'm going to write is going to be how many inches are in every one foot, which I do know. I know that there are 12 inches in every one foot, so I'm going to write that as my second ratio. And now I can solve because these are equivalent ratios and they're written as fractions. That means I should be able to take the numbers in the first fraction and either multiply or divide to get the numbers in the second fraction. So I should be able to multiply or divide 252 by something to get 12. Well, in order to find out what that is, I'm going to do 252 divided by 12 to see what I would multiply, or not what I would multiply, but what I would divide 252 by to get 12. And that's 21. So 252 divided by 21 equals 12. Well, whatever I do to the numerator also has to be done to the denominator. So x divided by 21 is going to equal 1. So we need to find a number that when you divide it by 21 will equal 1. The only thing divided by 21 that equals 1 is 21. And then we have to go ahead and label 21 what? 21 feet. And then we'll put it up here in our answer blank. Let's try this problem. We have 75 hundredths of a pound and we want to convert it to ounces. Well, this is a decimal, so my strategy is going to be a unit rate. It's going to be easiest to solve using a unit rate. And here's why. Because decimals can be written as fractions. So 75 hundredths can be written as 75 over 100. And if we put it in simplest form, that is three-fourths. So this is three-fourths of a pound. And we want to convert this to ounces. So I'm going to multiply by my unit rate. And my unit rate will tell me how many ounces are in one pound. Well, there are 16 ounces in every one pound. So I'm going to be multiplying these two fractions. Well, we know how to multiply fractions. I'm going to look at my diagonal pairs and see if I can cross simplify. 4 and 16, there is something that goes evenly into both 4 and 16, and that is 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, 16 divided by 4 is 4. Now I'll look at my other diagonal pair, 3 and 1. And the only thing that goes into both 3 and 1 evenly is 1. Well, 3 divided by 1 is 3, and 1 divided by 1 is 1, so I don't need to change anything. So now I'm ready to multiply straight across. 3 times 4 is 12. 1 times 1 is 1. So this is 12 over 1, and then I want to figure out what my unit is. Well, we have pounds here and we have pounds on the bottom, and so they'll cancel out. My unit is ounces. So our answer is 12 over 1 ounces, but this fraction can be simplified, and if we can simplify, we should. 12 over 1 is the same thing as 12 divided by 1, so our answer is 12 ounces.
Now we will convert 144 inches to yards. And we have to choose our strategy. Because this is a whole number, what strategy do you think we will use? If you said proportion, you are correct. Good job. So we're going to set up a proportion. 144 inches over some unknown number of yards. So I'm going to put x yards. And then I'm going to put an equal sign because it is a proportion. And then I need to write another ratio. And this ratio is basically going to be, um, and I just realized something. We don't know how many inches are in every yard. But I do know how many inches are in one foot. So I'm going to change this on the bottom to feet. 144 inches is how many feet? So this step is actually going to be multiple steps. This problem will be multiple steps. I'm going to write the next ratio as 12 inches in every one foot. And now I can solve my proportion. So why don't you pause and solve the proportion and press play to check. So once I solved this proportion, I got 12 feet, but it's asking us for yards, so we need to take it a step further. We need to set up another proportion to convert our feet to yards. So I know now that there are 12 feet, but I still don't know how many yards. So I'm going to write yards down here, x number of yards. Set up my second proportion, and now I'm going to write how many feet there are in every yard. There are three feet for every one yard. So now I can solve this proportion and that will give me my answer. Go ahead and pause to solve and press play to check. So I got four yards. So sometimes we will end up having to write two proportions and do our problems in two steps. And this was an example of one of those problems. Let's try one more. Here we have one and a half quarts equals, we don't know how many cups and I need to choose my strategy. Well, I know that because I have a fraction, I'm going to start off using a unit rate. Now, one and one half is a mixed number that can be written as an improper fraction, which is three halves, or three over two. So we can say three halves of a quart, and then we're going to multiply by a unit rate to find the answer, but I don't know how many cups there are in one quart. However, I do know how many pints there are in one quart. So I'm going to go ahead and write that, two pints over one quart. Now the quarts will cancel each other out, and I just multiply as usual. So why don't you pause to multiply and then press play to check. So I have 3 over 1 pints, which simplified as 3 pints. But the question is not asking me about how many pints there are. It's asking about how many cups. So I need to take another step to solve the problem. Now, though, I have a whole number, so I don't need to use a unit rate again. I can use a proportion. So back over here where it says strategy, we're going to say unit rate, then proportion, because we're actually using both. So I have three pints, and I want to know how many cups are in three pints, but I don't know that number yet, so I'm going to put x number of cups. Now this is equal to one pint and two cups, because there are two cups in every one pint. So I now have my proportion, and I can solve. Why don't you pause to solve and press play to check. So our answer was six cups. Now, I'm going to stop the video here, and in the next video, we're going to discuss the word problems on the inside of your notes booklet.